Hey YouTube, this is Zach with Achilles Financial and we are back with another earnings preview. This week is going to be crazy. You've got a lot of the largest companies in the entire world are going to be announcing earnings this week. And one of the big ones there is going to be Microsoft and we're definitely going to be watching this one. The reason why I'm going to cover Microsoft as opposed to something like an Apple, a Tesla, or an AMD is because this is a company that ever since they were $160 a share, we've been looking at their earnings and I've been really bullish on Microsoft and just judging by the call option volume we've been seeing last week, I think that that is a trend that is going to continue. I think that due to the fact that a lot of the big tech companies have kind of been trading sideways over the past three months, uh, in fact, you can even see here really trading kind of in the past six months. Let's go out to the one year. A lot of big tech kind of had that run up uh, back in the March, April time frame all the way up until July, August. We saw that huge run up in September and then we're now just getting back to that point. So Microsoft may be pushing for all time highs. I want to highlight that the next series of reports is going to be coming on January 26th, so that'll be later this week. And again, you can see here that the actual earnings release or when they're going to be talking about the press release is going to be at 5.30 that day. So a little bit after market hours, I'm sure that the actual information will come out well beforehand. But this is going to be a big report. Again, they've been trading in that sideways motion. We haven't seen a push for a new all-time high since this past September, so we've had quite a bit of time since then. I'm still incredibly bullish on Microsoft. However, I also recognize that the market as a whole is just completely overblown in terms of valuations. However, when I'm talking about long-term investing, this is a company that I think is going to be here five, 10 years from now, and thus I am ready and willing to invest in them. From a earnings perspective, what are we looking at? As you can see here on the earnings side, they had a monstrous Q1, and this is their fiscal year end, so we're gonna be in fiscal year Q2, and so that's what we're going to be looking at here coming up so again this is going to be the time period from september to december and or rather october to december and this is generally speaking one of the better times in terms of sales for gaming consoles for their software collection and i'm interested to see what they say about their business units uh, their microsoft office suite products as well as microsoft teams I think both of those products have the capability. If they do better than estimates is really what's going to drive this number higher. Uh, if we see another repeat like we saw last quarter in terms of just the volume, even though it's in the overall range, I think that's going to be a huge deal for them. You can see that in Q2 of last year, they had better volume than Q1. However, that time period didn't include a COVID-based scenario. So definitely going to be watching that. That's something that I wanna be following going forward is are we going to have a beat here? So that's something that we can continue to watch because I think that this number right here is important, but the big thing we wanna be watching is revenue. So if we go kind of into the fundamental analysis here, uh, I wanna just highlight these valuations over here on the right-hand side because we have some obscene valuations from a lot of companies out there in the software sector right now. Again, I talked about my stock screener in a video last week. I like to pick companies that are cash flowing, that are profitable, and that are going to be here long term when I'm looking at a long term investment. I personally, despite the fact that I play Microsoft for a quick flip occasionally, what I'm actually looking at is buying long term shares. So great company. And you can see that the valuations right here, they are insanely high however i think it's important to note that this is a company that is also growing at a very rapid pace and they actually can justify some of these earnings a lot better than a lot of the other companies out there at this point in time in my humble opinion what i'm going to be looking at really is the income statement and what we're seeing from a cash flow perspective as you can see right here, the total revenue has kind of been trading sideways over the better part of the past year. But when we look at that on an annual basis, you can see that that has been some monstrous growth. Again, it's just continued to dominate the industry. 
And if they continue to build upon this ahead of 2020, I think you're going to see a huge deal right there. Especially because, again, despite the fact that their revenue is growing, again, in 2020, they brought in $143 billion in sales. And the more impressive part of that is they are incredibly profitable with $44 billion of that in the net income side of things. So that essentially means for every dollar that they are bringing in right here, right at 33 cents is coming in at net income. And you can see some of that here in the valuation piece right here, price to, or let's look at the profitability, where they're currently having a net profit margin of right at 32%. And that is insane because, again, a lot of these companies at this scale are unable to do so. Again, nearly a 70% gross profit margin. That is crazy. From a valuation perspective, you can see that a lot of the, especially the P.E. ratio, the price to earnings, price to sales, and price to book, they are lagging a lot of the industry right now. And that is not because Microsoft's really changed. They've kind of been in the same area despite some growth this past 12 months but rather most of the industry is just exploding, especially in the software space over the past 12 months. This is one of the reasons why I think that Microsoft could continue to demand a higher valuation, which is why earnings, they could actually go up more. Because again, if you see some of these multiples change and you get closer to these industry averages, I mean, price to sales, this company just, they had sales over the past 12 months, TTM trailing 12 months, they had sales of $146 billion, and they're trading at a pretty big discount compared to the broader industry. That is my, my bullish case right here. So when we're talking about what are some of the catalysts that they have the capability to build on, I think that is indicative of, hey, they can grow. The other thing, if we go back to the fundamentals here, I don't wanna leave this alone, is the fact that if we look at their cash, I'm gonna to go to the quarterly view right here, they're currently sitting on right at 137, 138 billion dollars in cash or short-term investments. What this means is they have access to make strategic moves to go after anyone in the industry that they are saying, hey, I think that this is a worthwhile venture. So there's a lot of capability here. And for that reason, this is one of the things that I'm gonna be looking at doing for a Microsoft type play this week is potentially looking at a leap. So what I'm going to be doing is looking at options prices far out of the money that are probably going to be next January in the hopes that if Microsoft has a good run this week, if they go up past, again, if we kind of look at the chart here over the past year, I think what we're gonna see here is a potential break if they have solid earnings, the breakout, and you see the industry as a whole blow forward. The one concern I have here is the fact that if they come out or if the Biden administration comes out and they say anything about their new tax plan, they are saying that they expect to tax companies more heavily. And as a company that, again, if we go back to the valuation, it has such high net income. Again, if they're bringing in $44 billion in cash at the end of the year, and their tax rate goes up by another 10%, you're going to see that hit go directly to the bottom line. So again, there's there's not without risk, but I think a leap here for some of those options contracts or again, long-term investing, just buying the shares, there is potential here. But if you're looking for some of that high run up, then the options are definitely the way that you're gonna be doing that. So this is what I'm looking for. I think there's a lot of opportunity here. And that's one of the reasons why I love Microsoft stock. And again, I like to get paid for growth. They do have an annual dividend, albeit if you didn't get in $30 ago, uh, the 1% isn't exactly that incentivizing at this point in time. But I am a big fan of Microsoft stock. I think that I am looking to play that leap contract. I think we could see a earnings beat this year, but it's definitely something that I'm gonna be watching. So if you found this content helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. Thank you for all your support. And if you wanna see what plays I'm going after, in particular for this video to Microsoft, join that Discord in the link below. So thank you for watching. If you found this content helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks everyone. Talk to you later. Bye.